Good evening. Our big story tonight is, of course, the stunning revelations out of the trial of Jerry Sandusky. The former Penn State defensive coordinator is accused of sexually abusing at least 10 boys over a span of 15 years. And today, one of those boys, known as victim number six, told his harrowing story, a story that triggered a police investigation. He testified he told his mother about an incident when he was 11 years old and Sandusky showered with him. But he said he only told her bits and pieces, not about everything that happened. His mother called police. Howard Janet is the attorney for the now young man and his victim number six. Uh, Mr. Janet, it was very difficult to listen to this testimony, as so much of it has been this week. I, I suppose what was striking about it was that despite the abuse that your client suffered, uh, he said he stayed in touch with Sandusky over the years, sent him holiday greetings, saying you're great, you're awesome, and so on. Why would he have done that? How do you explain that with a jury sitting there maybe quizzical about why your client would do that? Well, Pierce, let me say this. If the jurors are hearing not only my client, but the other young men who were abused as children testify as well. And that story is pretty uniform uh, as between them. And there's a reason behind that. Because these kids, now young men, to the extent they're able to do it, create a bit of a Chinese wall in their mind. They bury these events that were so painful to them deep in their subconscious and they try and move on beyond that. So there's a Chinese wall that's created. And in reality, when you're dealing with someone who is, as Sandusky is being portrayed to be, a serial child abuser, you're talking about somebody who is successful at it because they are successful at manipulating People. They're not only successful manipulating the children, they were successful manipulating the parents mm -hmm. who allowed uh, continuing contact to take place. And there is a, a, a growing pattern that's been emerging day by day. Very similar stories, very similar grooming process, classic, many would say, pedophile behavior. I thought that probably the most significant moment uh, today came when a police investigator testified that he heard Sandusky tell your client's mother, and I'm going to quote this directly, I wish I could ask forgiveness. I know I can't get it from you. I wish I were dead. And he said he felt charges should have been filed against him at the time. Why were no charges filed after such an astonishing uh, statement to a mother of a victim? Why do you think nothing happened? Well, it's the $64,000 question. And when one looks at the circumstances that were known to the police and the police themselves who did the on the ground investigations concluded that charges should have been filed and they weren't the the question certainly is why weren't they were they not pursued because of who the uh, who the perpetrator was because it was jerry sandusky were they not pursued because penn state had some influence in connection with that I don't know that we're ever going to know the answer to that because the prosecutor who made the official decision apparently uh, no longer is on this earth for us to question about that. So frankly, even though that was the official decision that was made, I I'm far from convinced that that's what he really believed was the right thing in his heart. And you know, you get some sense about uh, legitimacy of decisions when you look at the circumstances. So they decided not only not to prosecute peers, they decided to ignore other information that essentially cried out for further investigation. Sandusky specifically admitted when questioned by the officer uh, about his behavior that he had showered with other children before. Yeah. And now he's expressing remorse for having doing that, done that, recognizing his wrong, saying I wish I were dead, yet he acknowledges he's done it with other children and they're not conducting a further investigation to find out some of the details about that. That's another compelling question. As a father of three boys myself, when I read some of the transcript of your client's evidence, particularly this line, I, it really got to me this. It made me very angry. I didn't want to get him into trouble. I still wanted to hang out with him and go to the games. He told me he had a computer. He'd invite me over. I could sit on his lap and play with the computer. I still wanted to do that. I mean, this is just sickening grooming at its most cynical and precise, isn't it? This is somebody who knows exactly what he's doing, grooming these young boys for sexual abuse. Well, what's also clear is that this young man not only talked to police right after this incident, he spoke to a psychologist. And he told the psychologist basically the same thing that he told to the jury here today, basically the same thing that he said uh, before the grand jury about what transpired in the shower and the activity that happened in the drive over. And it's, uh, uh, and it's just amazing 
that, uh, that an opportunity was lost here. And this psychologist who interviewed this young man reached the conclusion back at that time and generated a report to this effect that in her opinion, based on the information she had, Jerry Sandusky exhibited the conduct that is consistent with what you would expect of a pedophile. I have to obviously say and yet that again, Jerry, I have compelling to say, evidence and no investigation. Yeah, I, mean, I, have to, I have to say Jerry Sandusky remains <clears throat> innocent until proven guilty, obviously, um, but it, it, the evidence is certainly mounting up in a pretty grotesque manner. Uh, for now, hi, Janet. Thank, thank you very much for joining me. You're very welcome.